I, I don't have to preach this morning because the stories themselves are going to preach a sermon. And I know from past experience that the Holy Spirit just weaves all the different aspects of, of the stories. And then he, it'll take like this aspect and this aspect and this aspect from the story. And then it'll make a little snowball and then he'll throw it at you and then he'll throw it at you. A, a soft one. It doesn't hurt. And, and, and it, it, it's, it's, it's just different for each one of us. And, uh, uh, but, but before we get there, I want, I want to set the stage. Uh, I brought something with me this morning. Anyone, can anyone tell me what this sounds like? <laughs> All the hunters are salivating right now. <laughs> This is actually a hunting tool for whitetail, and it, this is during the ruts. It sounds like at, antlers rattling, but when uh, it also, it sounds like dry bones rattling, right? Uh, last week, I, I told you that uh, at the beginning of this banners series, that, that, that God gave me this, this, this kind of vision of what he wants to do or what he's going to start to do or what he's, he's been doing all along, but he's going to bring to fruition even more throughout this banner series. And it's, it's, it's from Ezekiel chapter 37. It's the story of, of, of dry bones coming to life. And I just want to read the 10 verses before we, we jump in. And it's from Ezekiel chapter 37. And listen to this. This is what Ezekiel speaking. He says, the hand of the Lord was on me. And, me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. And it was full of bones. And he led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath or ruach, or spirit, spirit the same word, the ruach of God, enter you, and you will come to life. And I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, and as I, com as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was the noise, a rattling sound... And the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds, breath from those slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, and as he, as he commanded, and the breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. And then it goes on to talk about how I'm going to put my spirit in people. And, and that, that was a prophesy that Ezekiel saw talking, foreshadowing what, what God's going to do in the power of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament times. But it, it's also something that, that, that the Lord gave me for what he wants to do in this church, that he, he wants to breathe his Holy Spirit, the Ruach of God, into our lives. And those, those dead areas, he wants to come to life. And so, when you hear these stories today, these five interviews that I have, this is, as the, as the song on the Shine FM goes, this is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the Spirit of God coming alive in our life. And so at the end of every interview, I've asked them to choose someone to come and pray for them. But we're going to say this. I'm going to say this is, the, this is the sound of dry bones rattling. And you collectively, I want you to respond by saying, Amen. And when you say amen, it means so let it be. It means you want more of that in their life and in our life individually and collectively as a church. You want more of the Holy Spirit's movement and bringing life to our church and to my, me too. So when you say amen, you're like, I want more of it. So let it be. So I'm going to say this is the sound of dry bones rattling and you're going to respond by saying amen. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. All right. So Mark, come on up. Mark Caret's going to be our first guy we're going to talk to. No word of a lie. No word of a lie. I met him this week. Uh, we met at A&W in the parking lot, and we chatted on Monday, and I heard his story, and the whole time I'm thinking, man, this, like God's just breathing life into this guy. I, after, the, after the conversation, I don't think I told you this, after the conversation, I get back into my little car, my little Honda Ascent, and I turn the car, and my, my radio is on Shine FM all the time. The Words that came right on the radio as I turned the ignition. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. 
after I listened to this story. And so not to set you up or anything, <laughs> but, uh, but no, God is working in, in, in your life. And uh, you, you called me out of the blue and said, hey, I want to share on this because God's doing something. So, so why don't you start by uh, uh, sharing what your one word is and then kind of your journey, journey to get here so far. Yeah, just hold that up and All right. go from there. Let me open it first. Yeah, it's in, uh, it's in Proverbs, right? Proverbs 16, 9. Well, most of Proverbs 16, but 9 stuck out anyways. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Um. And so, and so you, you, know, you said you, you chose that at the beginning of the year. And yeah. I hear this all the time. Like, I thought... God wanted this, or he's going to do this, and then partly through the year, he does something else with it. What, what was going yeah. on that, that, that so, verse? So in his heart, the man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. So what that really stuck out to me was that um, I think all of us at some point will end up living on an island thinking we can do it ourselves. Um, we live in our own strength, and we think, ah, oh, it's problems too small for God, or... I don't need to talk to anybody else about that, or I'll just figure it out. Um, so for me, what that meant is, I guess, I, when I grew up, my mom and dad split when I was eight. Um, before that, dad was a trucker, so he wasn't around much. After that, he really wasn't around, so I never really had that father figure. Um, mom tried the best she could, and you know, it is what it is. So I went through growing up very much alone. You know, on my time by myself, I would just spend alone. I would just do my own thing, watch TV or play video games or whatever that ended up being. Um, so I ended up with the sense of whenever something would happen, you would just kind of retreat. You would just go into my quiet spot or my quiet space. And for me, that was where I felt safe. But in the quiet, it was just that. There was nothing. It was quiet. It was just kind of nothing. So fast forward into life, you know, we have five kids and all the intricacies that come with that and kids and life and just trying to make sure that everybody feels loved. I ended up not showing love because I guess I never knew what love meant. I never felt it. Um, I ended up with a sense of failure, you know, thinking I was always a failure at everything I did, which was a lie in every way. Um, so my wife and I, we ended up going through a lot of struggles um, I ended up being in a very dark place, I guess, very closed, very reserved. And, and when you go into that, I don't know if it was a depression or what, I never labeled it. I don't like labels, but it was just nothing. It was almost like I just wished I wasn't, or I wish I wasn't here. Not in like a, uh, like a suicidal sense, but just like, a, like, I just want nothing. I want to just be gone. I just want to not be around or whatever. Hmm. And so that's pretty damaging. Uh, especially for my wife. So we ended up, I ended up going to see a counselor and trying to work through some of the stuff. And I mean, it took quite a bit of time. Um, but what we really dug down to was it was a sense of worthlessness. A sense Worth of worthlessness. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a fear of failure. It was just kind of, I was up here. But when you really dug down, it was actually a sense of worthlessness. I didn't feel like I was worth anything. You know, God didn't love me. My wife really didn't love me. It would be better if I just wasn't or, or whatnot which is a lie in every way um, because God took the time out of his day to make me and you and, and each one of us, you know, so the creator of the world decided to make me and you and you and you. And there's obviously a purpose and a plan for each of us. He clearly didn't mean to not, it wasn't an accident. So hmm. each one of the banners, I guess, kind of stuck out to me because it you know, the, or hit the nail on the head every single time it was, you know, um, feeling ignored, uh, hopeless, inadequate. We touched on mental illness, which is, I guess, kind of the depression stuff, which really did come out of nowhere. I didn't ever think of myself as that. Um, one big one was busy, so I would fill my, my time, or whenever we'd come up with something, I would just want to get to be busy. You know, I better go do the dishes, or I better go clean this thing, or organize the garage, or whatever, just busy. 
restless, so you end up with that restlessness in the soul because you're busy, you have no time to rest and you don't have any time to focus on God. You feel unheard, anxious, and condemned. So I think at the root of all of those, it ended up, well, they all kind of, for me, pointed towards worthlessness. Um, and I think all of us, in, in some sense, end up feeling that, whatever it looks like in your life. Um, I actually got a second one word from my wife. It was hers, but it really wasn't hers. I think it was also for me. You're one flesh with her, so you can take it too. <laughs> uh, Ephesians three sixteen says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do measurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And so that's what I was lacking, truly understanding what it meant to be a follower of Christ. Um, and so we had had lunch a little while ago and then again, and so it's been a bit of a journey, and it's fairly fresh, I guess, a couple months. Um, so out of all that darkness and all this stuff, there's a whole bunch of things that kind of just lined up. Um, and I was kind of in a spiral down, pretty dark and closed up. And, you know, I would talked with a close friend a few times, quite a bit. And um, then I ended up praying with you at the, we had had lunch. Um, and it just, something clicked in my soul. And it was to make a decision. And the decision was, um, you can stand in God's promise, or you can stand in Satan's promises. And Satan's promises are worldly. You know, you can have all the things of the world and whatnot, but God's promises are eternal. That That's awesome. Like, especially, like, your wife's one word as well. Like, that just fits yeah. right in with our one word series. Like, you would understand, like, what it means to be under the banner of his I love. No. Yeah. So... Along with the counseling, I guess, I'd end up doing something called EMDR, um, and it ended up helping me to reprocess some of the stuff. And so I look back at some of the things that happened in my life, and, and it, we kind of changed how they got processed in my brain. Um, and my thought processes have kind of switched from just feeling kind of stuck or condemned or dark or not worth it or whatever. And, and it ends up where it's very black and white these days, where there's right and there's wrong. You do or you don't do. There is no kind of being quiet and slinking off and doing what I used to do. It's it, just stand in it and deal with it because even though it may seem hard or impossible right now, um, we're not made to handle it. And there's a hole in your soul that can only be filled by God. And whenever you can't do it, God does it. It takes you back to the old footprints prayer. Or, was a prayer. My grandma had it on her wall. You know, it's like, where, where's that other set of footprints? And it's like, well, that's when I carried you. Hmm. So, yeah, that's awesome. I wrote down. You said I can't do it all. I need to let God do it. And that was a big pivotal moment for you. Yeah, yeah. Because of how I grew up, uh, I didn't understand what it meant to be a husband or a father. So I just had to give it to God and say, I, I don't know how to do it. I can. I know this much, but God. Yeah. can fill in the gaps. It's a pretty big gap. But. Wow. Awesome. There's a lot more, but that's kind of the, the two sticky note version. That's the, that's the version. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sound of dry bones rattling. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Where's Fred? Uh, so, so with each person, we're doing something brand new, this, this uh, one word service, because when a person stands up and proclaims the word or gives a testimony of what God's doing, whether it's from the baptismal tank or up here, there's always a pushback from the evil one. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great to have someone come and pray for them in their journey? And so you've selected someone to come and pray for you. Who is it? Fred. Fred. Where's Fred? Come on up, Fred. 
And uh, why don't you pray for Mark here and his, his journey. And uh, just, you can take your mask off. Just go to that mic over there. Actually, give me this, this one. Just okay. give that to me. Yeah, just stand behind that. Check, check, check. You can hear me anyway, right? Um, that's super cool, Mark. <laughs> new, new bits and pieces of that, but you just kind of put it in one big, neat package. <laughs> um, I, I was uh, just praying about what to share with you, and uh, um, and I nothing was coming, nothing, nothing was coming. But then when I was sitting there right away, and uh, Ephesians two ten popped in my head is that. We are God's masterpiece, creating uh, Christ Jesus to do the good things he planned for us long ago. And uh, the image that God gave me for you, you is that you're God's masterpiece, mm. and that he's proud of you, and that, uh, yeah, all that other junk is just from the devil. Just tell it to get lost, right? <laughs> and uh, it's been cool to see how, how you've been growing and just uh, getting stronger, so it's, it's encouraging. So, it's uh, yeah, it's been an encouragement to watch. But I just wanted to share with you... Uh, uh, Isaiah 55 as well. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything else you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and the bread for the hungry. In the same way, <clears throat> it is the same way with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want, I want it to do, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. You'll live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Where once there were thorns, cypress trees will grow. Where nettle, nettles grew, myrtles will sprout up. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. Lord, I just thank you for Mark and <clears throat> Charlotte and their awesome family. I just pray that um, you just continue to anoint Mark with your favor and your goodness and your blessing. And, and just uh, thank you for the man you've made him to be and that he can stand up proud and, and have the courage to share his story. And that in itself is, uh, is just a wonder, Lord. I just thank you for the strength you give him to do that. And I just pray that he just sends your blessing today as he goes forward and, and on, on his family too, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Hmm. Nicole, come on up. Nicole is, uh, was baptized uh, during COVID, it was last summer of 2020, and when we were at the, we filmed it at the Bronze Lake House. Remember, remember this, and uh, and Nicole um, just can't stop smiling. She has this infectious a smile because of what Jesus has done in her life, and He's doing something with her one word. And and I think again, it was like you thought it was this, no, but it was totally something else. And it was something <laughs> else that God yeah. did. So why don't you start by telling us what is your one word? And then how, what's God doing with it? Sure. Actually, first, though, I want to tell Mark, today I was going to wear a shirt and I completely forgot. And I actually wore it when I got baptized. And on the back, it says the devil is a liar. And I just completely forgot. I was going to wear that shirt today. Oh. I was like using my brain and I, I forgot. Nice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so my story kind of takes place a little bit back from the baptism. And then we came to the one word service and... I was thinking, I'm like, what do I want my one word to be? I, was, I don't know. I, don't, I just didn't know. And so I, I was looking at like, okay, so I'm coming back to church after kind of a life of always saying I'm a Christian, but kind of going back and forth. So I really wanted my one word just to be stay on track, stay on your path. So I chose Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you in which path to take. That's a good one. Yeah, so I, I, I chose that because I'm like, okay, I, I, need to, I need to dive into this. I've always kind of flip-flopped, so I needed to dive into it a little bit more. And, and that was my word. And then um, last summer, I'm sure a lot of you will remember, there was a trailer parked out by Bon Accord. And there is a, a lady living in there, and she would post on Facebook once in a while that she needed help. And even before all of this, that's just who I am. I've, I've been mocked and told that I'm a Christian with rose-colored glasses because I'm not very verbal, but I'm very giving. 
and that's just who I am. And it's, it kind of knocked me down a lot when I was trying to find my path and people were just kind of knocking me down saying, no, 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 you're not doing it right. Like, you know, so um, I'm a person who doesn't judge somebody by what they're doing or who they are because in my heart that's just not who I'm supposed to be. So, and I can't verbalize a lot to people on what they should or shouldn't be doing, but I can show them God's love through my actions. So, um, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. Some people have the <laughs> gift of word. I have the gift of going up and holding your hand. There you go. <laughs> um, so those, those thoughts have been thrown out. I love my rose colored glasses and I'll wear them every day. <laughs> um, so her name was Isla, the lady, uh, out by Bonacord and, um, she asked for help. So being who I am, I'm like, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll bring her some food. She kind of said, you know, she didn't have um, means to cook with other than a fire, and she had water, so I would bring her things like the, the easy mac and cheese that you just throw water in, or hamburger helper that you just throw water in, something that she could eat. And like, I had a bag of apples, so I brought her some apples, because I'm like, everybody needs something healthy too, not just all this processed stuff. So I get there, or sorry, before I even get there, I'm driving to her, and I have Spotify on, which is just a mix of everything. I have Christian music, country music, you name it, it's on there. And the song that comes on and is playing until I get to her is Come As You Are by Crowder. Hmm. And it just like, it hit me. And I'm like, yep, yeah, come as you are. It doesn't matter where you are, come as you are. He's hmm. there for you. Hmm. So I get to her and I'm talking to her a little bit. And she told me her story and what was happening and why she was there. And... All of a sudden, I'm just like, can I pray for you, which isn't me. So, and she said, yes. So I prayed for her, and I just prayed that God would just be there with her, guide her, help her out of the situations that she was in, and just to remind her that he loves her, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And uh, she reached out to me a couple times after that. I brought her pajamas. I brought her sweaters. I, you know, just whatever I could bring her. And then Serena reached out to me because she seen what I was doing, and she kind of talked to me about it, and she's like, what can the church do? And I was like, uh, I don't really know, because she's saying she's good, and she's about to leave. So it was kind of like that. So after I left her, I've always wanted to do something with my gifts, and I always thought, like, maybe social work, but I can't, I can't with the kids, because I'd want to bring them all home, and, and Mark would hate me, and Cadence would hate me. She, they'd be like, no more kids in our house, so... <laughs> so I'm like, hey, that's not my journey. I can't go that route. So then I thought maybe dealing with drugs and alcohol and, and helping out with people in that sense and counseling. And so that was really hitting hard on me and reading it on me. And Serena again reached out to me and she was like, my sister works, I think she works, or she, she serves with the, the bus, right? the Salvation Army, and she also gave me a number for somebody who does the Hope Mission bus, and these people go out into uh, the inner city of Edmonton, and they deal strictly with women who are out on the streets, and I'm like, that'd be really cool. So I called her, and her name's Carrie, and I said, Kate, I really want to get into drug and alcohol counseling. I really want to get into this, and how can I do this with schooling? And so she was talking to me about schooling, and and she said, have you really ever done this? And I'm like, no, not, not really. But like, I've helped out at the Edmonton Food Bank, but I haven't been in hands deep with the actual people and, and being there. So she said, well, she gave me some stories. And she's like, I really suggest that maybe you volunteer first. Just get your feet wet. And I'm like, OK, cool. She's like, unfortunately, I have nothing for you because of COVID. Nobody had anything. So this has been about a year and a half. I haven't been able to volunteer in the area that I want to volunteer. And she said, and also, too, do you have any schooling background with Aboriginals? Because unfortunately, that's the highest percentage of, of the people on the streets. And I'm like, no, I haven't. So um, that was about all I could tell you. And I was like, oh, man, my story is going to kind of be like, OK, that's it. I'm just waiting because I can't do anything right now, COVID. Um, but I did find some online courses right now. I'm actually taking an Aboriginal Worldwide View and Education course. And after that, I'm taking a mental education course. And I found these courses online for free. Nice. So I can do all these on free. And then 
as I'm thinking to myself, oh man, I have nothing to say. God's like, yeah, boom. And I get an email from the mustard seed asking if I'd like to be part of a Bible study with the inner cities uh, community. Yeah. So I'm waiting for my phone call back. And so for those who don't know, mustard seed works with the inner city. With the inner city. It's a Christian ministry that works with the inner city. Yeah, the yeah. and they're looking for a four-month commitment, Wednesday nights. And um, yeah, so I'm waiting for my phone call back. I'm excited. And while I wait, though, I'm, I'm helping out with the uh, food bank here. And I also am creating a hamper for a lady in Bonacord so, yeah. for Christmas. So, yeah, super exciting. So I'm waiting for my phone call. So. I love how you just, <laughs> you just, you're just clawing after oh, wanting to I'm serve so the Lord. I want to be doing yeah. all in. And, and, and then the Lord's like, okay, here you go. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have nothing to talk about. Now you do. <laughs> so now they've asked you to lead a Bible study or be part of a Bible study? I don't know. And see, that's what I'm waiting for the phone call. I mean, I don't, I don't think it'll be leading. They have a chaplain. I don't care if it's just serving coffee. I just want to be there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love that attitude. Yeah. I love it. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. All right. Who do we have praying? Oh, of course, because Serena has been a big part of this whole journey. I asked Serena. (laughs) Hey. Hi, Joel. (laughs) Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, That was so courageous. Thank you for sharing. (laughs) Um, Yes, I have been, just had the honor of talking with Nicole and listening to her and her enthusiasm to serve the Lord in this way. And um, it's just just very contagious. So thank you. (laughs) Um, I just want to reread your one word, if that's okay. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Dear Jesus, thank you for today, and thank you for this time. Thank you for Nicole and her compassionate heart. Thank you um, for her service. Thank you for um, her just experiencing true joy, being your hands and feet. Um, You have gifted her. You have called her in a certain way, and she is just... Um, waiting at your feet and waiting to be used by you. Um, I just pray that you be with her. Um, She's still waiting, but we know that everything happens in your time and that your time is the best time. And in the meantime, I pray that you just prepare her heart, that you just continue to speak to her, that um, you continue to guide her, and that she continues to turn her heart back to you and that she just keeps that um, bond of trust with you I just lift her up to you today I pray for protection as she continues um, on her journey Um, I I agree with her shirt the devil is a liar I just Mm. pray that she hears your words in her heart and her mind and her soul um, when those lies sneak up on her I pray all these things Mm. in your name amen amen thanks Nicole Trudy, come on up. Trudy is a a fellow East Coaster from Newfoundland. So I was over to their place, visiting her and Gary this past week, and it was like, when East Coasters get together, it's just, I don't know, just something, some bonding thing goes on there. But but, uh, God's been doing something in your life. And there was a Sunday here where I said, hey, if anyone wants to share a story, and then you tried to jet out of here. And I said, hey, do you think about sharing your story? And you were like, ugh! <laughs> I don't know. I, I was after praying and saying, Dad, uh, God, if you want me to share this story, uh, the pastor has to ask me because I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why you were moving fast, and I was outside, and I was like, hey, Trudy, and you're like, oh, I think we've all been there. That's why they're laughing, right? We, yes. we, we've all been there. So they, it's a very forgiving crowd. They want oh. you to. Yeah. It's just, this is really out of my comfort yeah. zone. They, they put up with me every week. So, I mean, they, anyway. So, so why don't you tell your story, and uh, uh, what's, what's going on, and what happened? There's a bit of a health issue you had here just a month and a half ago. Well, it was just supposed to be um, just a minor procedure. And I booked off two to three days from work thinking that that's all I needed. And I end up having a month off work. Um, 
I had a CT scan done on September the 20th. No, CT scan was done sometime in March. And I found out that I had a kidney stone that was almost two centimeters. So I went in on September the 21st for this minor procedure to get it blasted and early insert, and uh, everything went really well. And that night at 12.30, I woke up in a lot of pain and Gary Tip took me out to um, the Redwater Hospital to, uh, and I had to stay in there. They let me out at 9.30 in the morning and I was, felt that I was doing good. And then around 3.30 that afternoon, I started to get the chills. And my first thought was to lay down. I had one leg in under the blanket and I really felt, uh, no, don't do that. Because if you do, you're not gonna get back up. So Gary took me out to Redwater and the night before they wouldn't allow him to come in because of COVID, so he just left me out and as I was walking in, I staggered and the nurse ran and got a wheelchair. And So <clears throat> I got in the hospital, sorry, my voice. <clears throat> and um, I was there for a few hours and then I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't in any pain, but I was just feeling really weak. So I buzzed for the nurse and she came in and my blood pressure was 50 over 40. And so she called the doctor and they called the ambulance, which I wasn't aware at the time. I just looked up and there was two men standing there ready to take me into the university hospital. So they, um, but I was feeling really peaceful. Like I wasn't scared or I was just very peaceful about it. And uh, so they got my uh, blood pressure up a little and then they transported me into uh, the university and still I was I wasn't scared I was very peaceful and uh, the, there was a team there waiting for me and they told me they had to take me to the OR because I was septic so uh, in the meantime, um, so they obviously didn't get all of that stone or didn't well, break it up Well, what happened, enough. it all broke up. The doctor told me the next day after they had to insert a stent into my uh, kidney to my bladder and that all the kidney stone blocked my tube wow. and backed up and the infection was even to went to my blood. Wow. So, so that's why you were just fading fast and didn't even know it. I didn't even know it because when the doctor came in red water, he said like, are you in pain? Do you have chest pains? And I said, no, I don't have any pain at all. I was just, because my blood pressure dropped so fast and it was normal when I got there. Hmm. So it ran down really fast. And um, so they run you to the OR like At fast. four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Is it emergency surgery? Yeah, yeah. but I was very um, peaceful. I like, I, I don't know. I just felt that, that, I don't, that everything was going to be okay. Yeah. Even though it did come in my mind, it's late. Nobody is praying for me now because it's so late. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody is up. But this is, now we're getting to the exciting God thing that they'll, what happened yeah. with your brother. So then the next day, the next morning, my husband calls me to see if he was allowed to come to the hospital. And I said, yes, they said, you can come. And my brother uh, that lives in Manitoba, I always say Winnipeg, but he actually lives somewhere in Manitoba. And he woke at 1230 that night. And that was 1130 when they were getting ready for me to go on the ambulance. And he just felt, he prayed right through the night. He was praying all night and thinking, there's something wrong with me. He said he just couldn't get me out of his mind. And the next morning he said to his wife, he said, just text Trudy and make sure that she's okay. And she said, oh, she's okay. They will have let us know. And he said, no, 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 she's not okay. I know she's not okay. You need to call her. So, of course, my phone was put away when I got to the hospital. They put everything in a locker. And so they finally phoned Gary and Gary said, no, uh, she was sent to the university hospital last night. So, but, so, and he prayed all night. He was praying 
for my healing, for for no pain, and it it was very like I saw God in it all the way through that. And, and so he was praying this little prayer that he had heard from a his grandson, his yeah. his daughter-in-law taught his uh, two little boys to say this prayer. Um, Pain go, healing flow, in the name of Jesus. Pain go, healing flow, in in the name name of Jesus. Jesus. It's uh, this is this is such a cool story because he doesn't. He's in Winnipeg. He doesn't have a clue what's going on. So far as he knew, is that I had the laser. I was in Redwater overnight, but I got out the next day because Gary just rushed me out there. He didn't get back to like. He didn't let anybody know that I was transferred to the university because he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So he didn't let any of the family know. So no, Tom. He, he just woke up with this sense that something wrong with Trudy. He just woke up at twelve thirty and he just knew. He said he knew in his spirit. He I was just there before him and he knew that he needed to pray, and yeah. he prayed all night. Wow. Wow. And he, he just knew there's something wrong with Trudy and he prayed and prayed. Pain, go, healing, flow. There's something going on. There's yeah. something going on. Now, there, there's a lesson here. I think even you hear it in Nicole's there. Don't, don't ignore the prompts of the Holy Spirit. Right? That those, those prompts, when you, when you stay close to the Lord and his Holy Spirit's in you and you, you are fully present to him, he's going to place these things on your heart whether it's an act of service, whether it's an act of prayer, or whether you need to call someone just to say, how you doing? You know, and when Mark even talks about like people calling, they, they, they don't ignore those prompts of the Holy Spirit because God wants to use you and bless you through that and bless the pers- other person as well. It's just, just don't ignore those. Yeah. Because yeah. it, so, it was so peaceful, like, because normally I was there by myself in this hospital. Mm. And... But it was just, I don't know, I just felt, I just knew it was going to be okay. It was Mm. just a peace that was there. And my one word was be still and know that I am God, that I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. Mm. That's awesome. Be still and know that I'm God. And And, you were still. And and I was still, which is very hard for me to be still. But I was was Not me. Not me. Yeah. 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 This is the sound of dry bones rattling. And who do you have coming to pray for Uh, you? Eileen. Eileen. Why don't you come up, Eileen? I'm going to just adjust this microphone for you. You come on over here. You made friends with Eileen. You've had a She's my prayer partner. She's your prayer partner. Wow. I hope I get her next year. Hi, Trudy. Uh, thank you for your testimony. It, it's uh, nice to hear that you have your faith in in the Lord and and that uh, that He has brought you uh, out of your physical uh, ailments and and brought you to um, a place of comfort and and uh, I just want to I just want to read a, just a slight. Uh, a um, um, message here from it's one for 1 Corinthians 13 uh, verse 4 love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others and it is self seeking it is not usually not ang- easily angered but it keeps uh, record of wrongs love does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth and the truth, and it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And I think your love in God, your love for God, has brought you through these these uh, t- trying times. Lord our God, we just thank you for Trudy, and we just thank you um, that uh, that she has been able to uh, come through all her procedures and everything in. Uh, well, and that she is now um, a safe, Lord God, from uh, all the uh, diseases that's been bothering her. We just pray, Lord God, for her strength to continue, for her uh, faith in you to continue. Lord God, as, as, 
as long as uh, as long as she lives. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for who you are and all you do. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Eileen. Fred, come on up, buddy. <clears throat> Fred's no stranger to you guys. He prayed for Mark here just recently. He was on staff for a number of years there as youth pastor, and now, and then he went to prison. <laughs> I just love saying that, Fred. <laughs> He's a, he's a chaplain. He's a chaplain, by the way. The food's pretty good there, actually. <laughs> <coughs> chaplain. Can sleep, sleep all you want. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, you know, last Sunday was a Sunday where I said, hey, I need one more. And you were like, I can be it. And uh, God's doing something with your one word. So why don't you talk about you? Because it's not just this one word, but you talk about how the one words from previous years just compile and God keeps using those. And, uh, so what's your one word this year and how's that? Well, that's the beauty of the word is it just, uh, um, when it gets a hold of you, it just, it's just never ending, mm. just never ending. It just, uh, um, just telling Lou yesterday, I'm, I'm, I was reading and, uh, an Exodus and, and, uh, things you read like a million times and all of a sudden, something pops out like as if you've never read it before and God kind of opens your eyes to it and you go, what? <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I don't remember reading that before. <laughs> you know, that Moses in the desert, like we forget it, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so um, three years ago, uh, my, my main verse was um, Psalm 139, uh, 19. Search my heart, O Lord. Uh, test me on my anxious thoughts. Point out anything that offends you and uh, leave me along the path of everlasting life. And... Uh, that one really, really stuck with me because that's become, I wouldn't say a daily prayer, but for sure a weekly prayer. And uh, that's kind of a scary prayer to pray, <laughs> that portion of scripture, because uh, uh, when you mean it, God starts doing stuff. And then, uh, and then the next one was uh, Isaiah 43, 19. Uh, See, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I'm making... A new path in the wasteland it talks about the, the owls and the, the foxes will be refreshed and at the end it talks about how it'll bring glory to my name and then then that <clears throat> kind of rolled into this year um, as God started to show me my anxious thoughts things that I knew from way back but there's these things that creep up kind of like what Mark was talking about they're kind of buried in the <clears throat> base of your soul somewhere from all the garbage that you go through right and uh, they're just so rooted, so deep. You don't half the time you don't know they're there, but they're half the things that motivate us to do the things we do or don't do. Mm. And so, uh, deep down, I always had this unsettling uh, thought that um, that does God really care? And, it, and you really, we talked in your office about you touched on um, a couple of sermons back about um, the three attributes of God: God's omniscience, omnipresence, uh, uh, omnipotence. So God is all-knowing, he's always with you, and he's all-powerful. And, and uh, in my real formative years of my independent faith, uh, in grade seven, and the denomination I grew up in, we had this thing called confirmation. So you'd go through the Westminster Catechism one year, and then the second year you'd go through it again, but then you'd memorize, like, I don't know, like a whole pile of verses, like, I don't know how many, but lots maybe 70, 80, something like that, to that back up all the theological ideology that's being taught. And um, the very first thing you learn when you open up the catechism are the three attributes of God. God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and uh, omniscient. And so paired with my background, um, I really doubted that uh, God was a father that cared so when I read that, it kind of even dug it deeper. Like if God is all powerful, He knows everything, and He lets like He's He's always around, and He knows everything. Well, then, well, then for sure He doesn't give a rip because why would He let stuff happen, right? And and yet in the in the core of my being, I had a very deep faith that God was real and that somehow I could trust Him. And it was funny how when you leave the cross out of the picture and you don't center everything on it you can go down all these logical rabbit trails that really are just it's just part of the package but it's not the center it's not mm. center stage and how important it is when you leave that out mm. well how it can 
just how the devil can use your past is kind of keep you going down a path that's not healthy and kind of tell you who God isn't. And so <laughs> your one word this year is... Cast your cares upon me, for he cares for you. First Peter 5, 7, which is very short. And I felt not, not embarrassed, but sometimes you fix something that is like, you know, Jesus loves me. And you, <laughs> you think, well, if I stick that in a wall, people are going to think I'm just a, the dork, right? <laughs> like, or, you know, yeah. a simpleton. But at the same time, that's part of the background is well, why are you worried about what people think? Like, what are yeah. you worried about? And so... Your wife even sings it at home? Yeah, and so... Um, What's cool about Lou and I's backgrounds is, is um, both our mothers are really, really musical, and they sang in the house all the time, and they taught us songs and all this stuff. And Lou knows all these songs I've never heard of. To this day, she sings stuff that I've never heard of, and they're really cool because they're really short. They're usually kids' songs, mm. and they have a real one-two punch. And then there's this one song that uh, you've probably heard before, but it's, uh, um, I will cast all my cares upon you. And, it, and it's, it, it basically sings that verse yeah. out, right? <clears throat> and it says, um, uh, I'll lay all my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. And it's a very simple song, right? Yeah. And uh, so when I, when I told Lou what my one verse was, well, then she starts singing this song. Well, then it's stuck ever since, right? Mm. And so I always have this little simple ditty in my head that, that reminds me that God does care about me. And so what that led into was me kind of going halfway through the year. Um, COVID in jail is hard because it changes everything because of the distancing and everything. And it's, you can't do ministry like you normally do. So it's kind of a recipe for burnout because you're doing one-on-ones till the cows come home and you hear tragedy after tragedy back to back at a level that you can't really deal with really and like god can deal with it but it's always that how much are you doing in the flesh and how much are you how much are you letting him do so it kind of takes its toll after a while so kind of mid-year i was feeling kind of kind of fried right and 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 then uh, doing the business too business has changed <clears throat> with the cars so it's just more complicated and so i'm just i'm just praying crying out to god saying i just need a holiday i need a break but i can't take a break <clears throat> and so um so lo and behold, I, I uh, get sick, get pneumonia, and get, end up in a hospital for eight days, and and then going on short-term disability for basically it's been ten weeks, and now gradually I'm not back at work, but I'm almost through it all. But uh, God's got a real sense of humor when it comes to how to take a break. So, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I could really resonate with what Trudy was saying with uh, having a peace. So even though at times I felt panicky because I couldn't breathe, but I had this peace that just wouldn't it wouldn't go away and. And in the hospital, it was just like, the, the food in the hospital actually was really good, I just want to say. But, <laughs> but the size of a golf ball just doesn't cut it, so you go around stealing everybody else's food. Like, you know, if you look cordon blue, the size of my thumb, like, it's just like, you might as well go to Costco. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. Hey, you look pretty sick. You're not hungry, are you? <laughs> so when that sheet comes out, just fill everything out. Fill out the next guy's too and put your name on it. <laughs> Jello, jello, jello. Yeah, that's good. So the, it was this sick, being sick was like a blessing in disguise. It was, it was totally a blessing in it disguise. It was God caring for you. Yeah, I don't think it was for my wife, but yeah. because they're all worried about me and the kids are looking at me like, I'm going to die. And it's like, I'm not going to die. Like, I'm fine. Like, yeah. Dad, you're not breathing. You're purple. Well, whatever. It's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> breathing is overrated. Yeah. yeah. He was breathing his spirit into you. At the yeah. Time. Yeah. And uh, just how he uses stuff when you don't expect it. And even just, it just kind of popped in my head this morning as I was listening to everybody. I had this book by Bob Goff uh, that Owen gave to me, actually, uh, called Love Does. And uh, I was reading in the hospital, and I, and I started having these cool conversations with this one nurse. Hmm. So long story short, I gave her the book and just kind of was able to share a bit about the gospel with her. And this is pretty cool, just how God works amongst all the nice. ridiculousness. And nice. yeah, it's cool. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Amen. Amen. So Darren was going to pray for you. He's yeah. sick. <laughs> Actually, my wife was supposed to pray for me first, but she didn't want to cry. So then, then I asked Darren. So now I'll ask you, but we won't put her on the spot. We'll put you on the spot. Darren, I, yeah. <laughs> I'll pray for you. Let's yeah. Pray. Oh, God, thank you so much for just how your word is, is living and active and how if we allow it, it can come true in our life. Thank you, Lord, for Fred's story and 
how all of these one words over the past few years just kind of build in his own spiritual development and spiritual renewal. Thank you, Lord, for, um, for caring for Fred. Thank you, Lord, for this year, for carrying him in an unorthodox way that he would never have picked or dreamed or imagined. Lord, he was able to catch a break and uh, not in a way that he thought. And thank you, Lord, for restoring his soul. I pray, Lord, that you continue to do that. Restore his soul by the power of your Holy Spirit. Breathe into him the breath of your Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you so much for Fred and that he's part of this church and this body. Continue to use him to do powerful things for you. Anoint him for his ministry in the prison as he hears all of these heavy, heavy, heavy stories, Lord. May you carry that burden. May he not carry that burden. May you carry that burden so that he can carry on your work. Use him powerfully in that prison, we pray. Anoint him in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks, Fred. All right. Last one is Tyler. Come on up, Tyler. And Paul Allison was supposed to be here. Paul Allison had a surgical procedure on Monday, and then he's on some medication, and he cannot leave his house. So he called me last night, and we're going to try and bring him in by phone here to have a conversation. We'll see how this goes. And he's watching online right now. Are you there, Paul? I am. Yeah. Good. Can't say something so people can hear you. I'm sleeping. Ooh. Look at that. Technology, eh? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I'll try to hold you close and uh, give you a chance to chat, and uh, we'll see if we can make this work. Well, mate, I mean, we've done the over the phone, over the speaker on the war room there before, too, yeah, so yeah. we've made it work. So, so, so th- th- I'm really excited about this one. I like, I'm excited about the other ones, but uh, uh, you guys are the most unorthodox pair. And you guys, I want you to tell the story of how you came together and why you came together and, and what your thoughts were going into this thing. And mm-hmm. then we'll get into one word stuff. So Tyler, you talk first and then we'll let Paul talk. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we all got the, the one prayer connects um, at the beginning of the year there. And going into it, I kind of had... Can I just pause here? Sure, so Just sure. for those who don't know, we did an initiative, like we did one word at the beginning of January, where everyone put their name in a hat that wanted to, and then everyone drew a name, and we linked up a prayer partner this year with someone, and they prayed with that person specifically for the year. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I went into that kind of, you know, nervous as to how that was going to play out. I was like, okay, well, hopefully I get somebody my age, or um, maybe somebody younger that I can kind of help mentor. No, that guy, <laughs> I uh, got paired up with Paul. Yeah, and, didn't uh, know Paul. Didn't know Paul from a stick in the mud before. Um, That's a good illustration. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Jeff liked that one too. <laughs> he's, he's laughing, he's laughing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got paired up um, for our one prayer connect there. And, you know, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really sure. I, I knew that Paul was, you know, quite, uh, quite older than I was. Um, so I wasn't sure how the dynamic was going to go, but um, Paul is just a man with full of stories, and I absolutely love love to hear people's stories. Um, you know, whether that's testimony or just hearing what's going on in their days. So, you know, Paul, uh, me and Paul have had a number of you know two, three hour phone calls of of just catching up or you know mm-hmm. seeing how, what we need prayer for. And and, 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 and so it's been an amazing thing for you. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I wrote there. down what you said to me the other night. This is why God doesn't give you what you want, but what you need. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if I would have got paired up with somebody my age, it wouldn't have been, you know, what I, I, it might've been what I thought I needed, but this is, this really was what I need because Paul's just got so much wisdom, um, through his years that he's been able to pass on to me and, and it's been truly amazing getting to know him and, and just the, the dynamic that's been able to grow from that. Okay. Let's let, let Paul talk here. What were your thoughts, Paul, going into this whole one word thing and you get selected with Tyler or one prayer thing. Well, my thought was that I wanted to have, uh, I wanted God to just give me the what he wanted me to have. I didn't, I didn't care what the age was. Uh, I just wanted uh, to have God's will in this. Mm-hmm. And so you've said that uh, being connected with Tyler has been also helpful for your spiritual growth and development. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, getting to see the faith this young man has just 
lifted my spirits beyond anything I could imagine. He absolutely uh, has an absolute hunger for God, and that just made me jump for joy. So I was so thankful that God had put me in a position where I could learn from somebody that was so much younger than I was. He's three times younger than I am, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, um, I was so thankful to have him. And so, yeah, I guess that's it. It was really cool for me when I was over there the other night to watch discipleship in action. Because Tyler would say something, and then Paul would say, oh, no, you shouldn't say it that way. Yeah. It's because you should say it this way because of this truth in the Word. And you're, you're thinking wrong on this thing. And I was like, wow, just step back and watch discipleship happen. It was Yeah, I mean, we've we found in a lot of our phone calls and conversations that it's been you know, it could be a topic that we've talked on for weeks and, you know, some, one of us will just say something and we're like, oh, click, click, click. It's kind of clicking in the head as to how, how we can apply this a little better. And, and, um, yeah, we really do like that dynamic. We just are, are really able to feed off of each other and, and kind of, yeah, yeah, I guess feed off each other is just the best way to. And so you've kind of you're, you're both part of this thing called War Room with a Difference, which is this online Zoom prayer initiative that mm -hmm. kind of got a birth through Paul. And then why don't you talk a, a little bit about, uh, Tyler, how, how you got to be part of it. Yeah, so um, this would have been back in September when this kind of started off here. Um, but yeah, so me and... Me and Paul, I mean, our dynamic originally started, you know, we'd call each other once a month as delegated by the, the One Prayer Connect. And then it, that quickly translated into, you know, calling each other two, three times a week and just, you know, catching up and whatnot. And then um, one time there in September, yeah, Paul calls me and he says, uh, so it's been laid on my heart that well, we're supposed to start this, this war room with a difference. And he's like, and I have no idea what this is supposed to be or how this is supposed to go about and whatnot. And my... My immediate response was, I'm in, count me in, like I want in, What I don't know what it is it's going to be either, and I was, yeah, just count me in, and then that related just back to my one word that I had selected for, um, for this year, and that was Matthew 4, um, I think it's 19, yeah, and it's um, when Christ approaches uh, Peter and his brother Andrew on the boat, and he says, you know, follow me, and they immediately drop their nets, and they, and they followed him. And the same thing following after that when they went to, uh, um, yeah, John and James on the boat after. And it says that they immediately left their father and their boat and they immediately went to follow. And that was what I really wanted to translate into this year. Um, and just, you know, when the Lord calls to be willing and not even to be able because I know that I'm not able, but I know that God is able and all I needed to do was be willing. Um, so, yeah, when call, Paul called and said, I've got the... I've got the war room with a difference, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Immediately. <laughs> yep, I'm in. Let's do yeah, it. You have no it. clue what it is. Yeah. What about you, Paul? Well, for me, I had a prayer. I, I had, I'm sleeping at about 3 o'clock in the morning because God wakes me up and he starts talking to me about this, this war room with a difference, and he wanted me to start it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he says, I want you to start this war room with a difference. Well, my first thought was, but, 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 but I can't talk. I, 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 I don't know nothing about the Bible. I, I'm lost. I'm, God, I can't do this. But these are only thoughts. I didn't say it out loud. And then all of a sudden, it reminded me about Moses. And I thought, oh, no, I don't want to go there. Yes, Lord. <laughs> because Moses, he took Aaron, his brother, and Aaron became a a problem for him. Mm. So I definitely didn't want to go there. So I said, yes, Lord, you provide what you need to provide. So the next morning I immediately, or the next day I immediately called Tyler because I don't know what this was and I had to talk to somebody. So I told Tyler about it. Tyler floored me by going, well, I want it. And I just blew it. It just blew me away. Mm. That's awesome. So uh, talk for a minute about how you see our making Jesus famous uh, 
kind of our slogan as a church. How, how, how are you starting to see that in, in your war room? Um, why don't you, Paul, take that? What, what do you see it as? Well, again, <laughs> one of these many wake-ups in the early mornings, uh, the Lord started talking to me about the, the, the signage in our church. And the main sign, of course, is making Jesus famous. And uh, he said, what do you see in this? And I said, it's a wonderful sign. And I said, it, it really has an awesome meaning. And, and uh, God proceeded to correct me. And he told me that's not a sign. He said, I gave it as a gift. He said, that is a war cry. He said, one person in the church has got it right. And I went, oh, and he's right. There's one little lady in the church that actually knows what it means. Because when you say it on Sunday, uh, what is it you say? Why are we you here? You say what? It, say it again. Why are we here? She, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, she, <laughs> she yells it out with everything she's got. She's got it. The rest of us lost it. Yeah. So anyway, we asked you if we could use that in the war room with a difference because God showed me something about it to use. And when we started using it, it's been changing our whole outlook in the war room with a difference. Hmm. It is amazing how it opens up the Holy Spirit within us. It, and you Each one of us, one at a time. And you said that you'll wake up in the middle of the night screaming it. I've done it a few times. I think I did it just a couple of nights ago again, <laughs> where I'll end up waking up in the middle of the night and I'll be screaming out, Make Jesus famous! <laughs> and I'll quickly look and see if my wife's looking, if my wife's looking or whatever, but she still sleeps, so I don't know how she sleeps for that, but she does. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, but I really found it's changing my life and it's waking up the spirit with it. it it's allowing the spirit within me to come alive, mm -hmm. which is changing my whole way of thinking. Interesting. That saw, Ezekiel 37 is about a vast army that he saw after that, and it's mm -hmm. a war cry. What, you want to talk about making Jesus famous? Oh. Um, well, that's, I, I, I thought that was so amazing that, that they sang that song this morning. Yes. Because the, the dry bones, you, and I found out it was you that was preaching on it that day. And uh, you were preaching about the dry bones, and when you said the dry bones and the batter, the moment you mentioned the batter, I saw our little logo over top of it, and I just went, what is, what do you mean? Hmm. Well, first of all, I saw a field of dry bones, and I've always thought of dry bones as a field, like a farmer's field, you know, uh, an acre, two acres, five acres, a hundred acres, no big deal. I, you know, I just thought like that. I didn't really think much of it. But God opened my eyes and I saw this literally desert full of dry, dry bones two feet deep. And Ezekiel cried out to the dry bones. And I saw these dry bones slithering across the desert to find their old bodies, to put the bodies back together again. It was so amazing to watch. And then next, this umbrella opens up and I'm going, what, what, what's going on, Lord? And then I realized, oh, is that the church? And he said, yes. He said, 1,500 1, years ago, he said, the church began to drop the ball. He said, my church began to drop the ball. And he said, because of that, all churches today are lacking the knowledge of how Jesus first set it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let Tyler, what do you want to talk about? Sure. Um, yeah, so just on the, on the topic of, uh, of applying that making Jesus famous, um, you know, and this was another instance of where me and Paul's, that, that discipleship was able to kind of feed off each other and build each other up because... Um, you know, when you came by and we, we had the sit down before this, um, you know, I was, I was saying that, you know, that making Jesus, Jesus famous is like a revolving door of, 
as you're going through your day of constantly asking yourself, how can I make Jesus famous in this instance? How can I make Jesus famous in this instance? But Paul that night, that night called me and he says, uh, you know, I think actually what you meant to say was, um, <laughs> he likes to do that. What you, Tyler, what you meant to say was this. <laughs> um, was that it's not what I can do for Jesus. It's how can I remove myself out of this and let Christ just be fluid through me. And that's the, the revolving door of now is just how can I remove myself out of this situation and just let Christ flow through me in whatever the instance may be, whether it's um, sharing with people at work or, you know, just the, you know, brotherly dynamic or, or anything like that. That's just how can I remove myself out of this situation, take out my own selfish desires and just let God's will flow through me. Um, awesome. So that's really, it's been the learning curve with the, the making Jesus famous of, of how to apply it, but it's been Okay, la- last amazing. question is this. What are you guys praying for lately? Well, so our, so we do have the war room every week. Um, it's on Wednesdays there at seven o'clock. Um, it's just over Zoom. <laughs> And um, our main focus, we came up with a mission statement as to what, what our focus would be. Um, and that mission statement is to bring unity to the church, and that's church capital C, not just SAC, but unity to the church through God-centered prayer. Um, so it's not a traditional war room in the, or a prayer room in the fact of, of just congregational um, um, needs um, you know, for, for healing and, and things like that. It's our main focus is just bringing unity to the church as we've seen so many wedges driven in between the churches. Um, then it causes a lot of confusion for non-believers so, um, or new believers. So we want to just bring that unity to the church and, and um, that's always been our main focus that we want to drive home every week there. Yeah, so. yeah. And Paul, what about you? What are you praying for lately? Okay, I couldn't hear all that uh, Tyler said, but... Um, we're praying for, I do believe he said unity for the church, which is true. Uh, we're uh, trusting that uh, God is going to lead us and show us how to bring it all together. And we're trusting that God will unify the church as a whole, not just SAC, but the church as a whole. That's awesome. So if people want to be part of this war room every Wednesday. Yeah, yeah every Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Um, it's all over Zoom. Uh, you can find uh, the link to it. It's on the uh, Sturgeon Alliance website. If you just go under ministries and small groups, and you'll find the, the link to the war room there. So, yeah, Sundays at 7 o'clock. Or, uh, sorry, Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. And if you're interested, please come to see. Yeah, it's all online. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Amen. 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 And who will you, who's praying for you both? Uh, you are. I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In seminary, they said, preach, pray, or die at a moment's notice. I'll choose pray. Yeah, I'll choose pray. All right. <clears throat> God, thank you so much for Tyler and Paul and how you've brought them together. It's just amazing, the story of uh, not giving us what we want, but what we desperately need. Thank you for the thirst that you've created in both of them for you and for your word and for prayer and for unity in the church. And I pray that you'd bless that initiative as they gather on Wednesday night and pray. I pray, Lord, for just even deeper discipleship to happen between them, that Tyler would teach Paul and that Paul would teach Tyler. I pray for even more of these relationships to be built in our church, more of these discipleship relationships, prayer-based discipleship relationships to be built in our church. And that, Lord, you would continue to breathe your Holy Spirit into each one of us and that we would sense your Holy Spirit blowing in our lives and you would bring to life those things that are dead. We give you all the glory for what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. And everyone agreed and said? Amen. 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 All right. Paul, I'm going to hang up here on you, okay? We'll talk later. All right. Blessings, brother. I'm going to ask the worship team to come. And uh, they're going to close us off with the one song that's been kind of the staple in this whole series. Banner over me is love. I promise we're going to let this rest for six months after this series. (laughs) But let's sing it with enthusiasm as we sit under the banner of God's love this morning.